Uh, I started playing very young. Um, well, I, I started playing actually when I was eight in my brother's side, under 12s. Um, and then found my way into my own, uh, maybe a year above me. Because uh, I was quick and always had that pace. Um, I could survive even playing uh, age groups above because I could run uh, past most people. But um, the gradually as that went on as a kid playing, then uh, you would you would pick up certain heroes and stuff and look at um, certain players. But the biggest influences in my career at, at that age are, are uh, being supportive were, were my parents, my mother and father taking me to all the games. And, you know, it's just about playing football for the enjoyment. You never ever thought about making a living out of it, you know, at that age. But once you start getting towards 10, 12, 13, 14, that's when you start to really look ahead. I was picked up uh, by a scout called John Ward, actually. Um, and he, he made a decision on me to sign me for Dundee when, uh, in a cup final. We lost 10-2. My team lost 10-2. I scored the two goals. And um, I was the only one that got picked up that day. Uh, and I went on to sign for Dundee at 13. And that was me almost uh, right up from that moment in time starting to really focus on becoming a professional footballer. But you've been really lucky to play under some you know, really experienced managers right through your career. Jim Duffy at Dundee, for example, how, do you, how did you find working alongside him? Well, I actually made my debut under Simon Stainrod. Uh, guys like Ian Monroe, Gordon Wallace signed me my first uh, contract at 16. Um, there was many managers. Jim became uh, my, my first team manager when Simon Stainrod left the club. Both him and, and Simon uh, were involved in my debut. Uh, at a time breaking through, and Jim was um, Jim was a player manager. So was Simon. Simon played as well, but Jim was a uh, was an old head on the pitch, and then you know uh, had that certain quality about him, uh, very combative, um, a real fierce will to win, um, and that was something that I found going into my next uh, club, Hearts. Jim Jeffries, you know, they're similar types of uh, of personalities where there were a large degree of aggression. Um, and, their, uh, and their demands. Um, but yeah, it was a really good introduction into my professional life. And as I said, I was always thankful to Simon Stainrod for giving me my debut. I did hound him a wee bit because I did ask why I wasn't uh, already playing in his first team, which um, ended up giving me and my, uh, a couple of my ground staff boys some running. Um, but from that moment on, when I made my debut, that was me. Establishing yourself there and then getting the move to Hearts, how did the, the move to Hearts come about? To be honest, uh, it got to the stage where, looking back on it, I was probably feeling as if I needed a move. You know, I had played well, broken into the side, um, cemented my place almost, um, been playing under 21s. And there was a wee bit of uh, speculation about my future, uh, possibility of moves and things that never came. And I just felt that I was ready, having been signed at the club since I was just turning 13 and I was now getting to 21. Um, it was time for me to move now. At that time, I was still obligated to come back to Dundee, but I was coming back as a free player. There wasn't any Bosman rulings back then. Um, and and Strum Gratz came in for me uh, in Austria, but I was just about to be married, and I felt that going abroad at that time, which now I think it would be more uh, welcomed and easier to do, maybe because people are embracing that side of it, but at that time I didn't feel it was right for me. and. Um, all of a sudden, Jim Jeffries uh, became uh, an option for me at Hearts because he got in contact with my agent. I think Jim Duffy actually said, look, the boy's going to go to Austria. Um, we know you like him. Could we do a deal? The deal was done. I went and spoke to Jim and I signed for Hearts. That Hearts team, it seemed to be a really special place to be around with, with, with both Jim Jeffries, Billy Brown mm -hmm. and culminating and, and winning the Scottish Cup in 98. Yeah, listen, that was, a, that was <sighs> some of my best memories. Uh, as a footballer uh, from that time. Um, I was, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have won the Scottish Cup five times. Um, my first one with, with, with Hearts. And I've won a couple of Celtic Rangers uh, Cup finals, which were always very sweet. Um, none more so than the one who won 3-2, the last almost touch of the ball with Peter. But I still stand by my opinion that the very first one was my most special Scottish Cup. And that is purely down to the fact that Hearts had gone so long it was my first almost real involvement of being a, like a key member of a team um, with such a vibrant young side then. You know, Jim had a fierce will to win, as did Billy. And the team 
shared in that. You know, we were energetic, we were quick. Um, we went very well uh, in the league that year. Uh, I think we ended up uh, losing the league by seven points, I think. Um, it was a year Celtic won it. And, but we always knew that there was something happening special there. And of course, we went on to, to beat Rangers, of course, in, in the Scottish Cup final um, at Celtic Park. And it was just wonderful memories. And of course, that put me onto a new platform. Um, and I believe got me in the eye of uh, what would be my next manager. Your time at Harps, another game that really stood out, I guess, mixed memories was to have been the, the 4 3 League Cup yeah. final from the season before when you won man in the match yeah. but ended up in the, the losing side in a incredible game. That was probably the, the one moment after that game where that team believed that they could win something, that there could be something better than what they, they, had, they had shown previously. You know, Hearts had suffered several defeats in Cup finals. Um, so it was a long time since they enjoyed a, a trophy success, but that night after the game, although we'd lost 4-3, we had a, a brilliant game. I would just say me, I had a good game, I enjoyed it that night um, and won man of the match, but um, as a team performance it was pretty special indeed if it wasn't for uh, a certain Mr Gascoigne turning on for like 10 minutes or so, um, we could have probably been enjoying a cup success earlier. But it was that night after the game we were going back in the bus and it was something brewing and that gave us the belief, the catalyst almost, that we could do something special, which we did. But the performance, when you look back on it from the team, it was such a great game, you know, 4-3. I know we scored late on to make it 4-3, but it was a horrible night and the game almost never went ahead because it was really bad snow and it was the surrounding areas, although the pitch was good. And Jim Jeffries had come into the, the dressing room that night and then said, do we want to play, you know, do you want to play? And, um, and we said, of course we want to play. I'm not sure if they want to play, you know, with that one Jim trying to motivate us. And we really did because we, we knew what we had in the dressing room, we would give Rangers a game. So you got your move to Rangers, how did it come about? What are your memories of that? I think, as I said, I touched on there, we, we came to Ibrox and we, it was a game we drew 2-2 here in the 97, 98 season. Snowing, and I scored out there against uh, Andy. And uh, I believe Dick Advocate was on the stand that day, or so I'm told, and then I think I must have caught his eye. So when he came into control here as manager, I think it was apparent that he wanted to sign me, but we just won the Scottish Cup at Hearts. I absolutely believed, as the rest of the squad did, that we could then go on and do something special, maybe even challenge for the league, having gone, I believe, very close the season before. Um, in fact, the first game was against Rangers at Tynecastle, which we won, and we thought that just cemented the belief. And I maybe had a chance to sign then, but I, I decided that I signed an extension at Hearts because I was so happy there. And I wasn't thinking about, you know, I knew that Rangers could have been a, a fantastic move for me, but I was just so happy where I was. Um, the team, we just won the cup, all the emotion that went with that, the belief of what we could maybe do in the season uh, that was coming. So I didn't want to move, but not long afterwards, I broke my leg, and it was my first proper big injury, like a break. And you're thinking, oh, pff, I made the wrong decision here of saying an extension, but I made my uh, I made my return to action. I think five, six weeks later, scored the winner in the 90th minute against Dunfermline, and then I got a phone call on the Sunday um, from my agent to say that Rangers had uh, expressed their interest in me to the club, and um, this could happen. So. Clearly, very excited by it. Oh, and considering that I just recovered from a broken leg, um, you know, I was. It was one of those ones where, uh, as I said, I was so happy to stay at Hearts and I'd signed an extension there. But when, when the club expressed their interest that this is properly serious now and they know they've got to bid some money, I was excited. Um, those discussions continued throughout that uh, week. I'd gone in and spoken to Jim Jeffries um, about the whole thing. He understood that it was going to be a lot of money for the club, um, that it would be ha difficult for them to turn down, and whether I you know, would, would want to do it. So of course I said, well, yeah, I absolutely want to do it. Um, I've loved my time here at Hearts, and uh, if the club can get a lot of money that can then be put back into the squad to, to help you, uh, and indeed help the club move forward, then, uh, then that's a bonus. But yeah, I want to, I want it to happen, and it did, thankfully. 
how then did you find it coming into the dressing room here at Ibrox with so many big names? As it yeah, was it listen, it was it was great because coming here, the, the, one of the f I came in and I, I signed uh, my contract. I remember um, the gates got opened up and I drove my car on the track um, and met Greggy John and um, he brought me in and took me in. It was Douglas Odom at the time I was signing my contract with, so got it all checked out the paperwork, signed the contract. Uh, Greggy was there and then the manager. Uh, the Gavica had come in and um, just welcomed me to the club. Uh, he congratulated me on a haircut because uh, the last time I played against him, I think it was getting a wee bit long. Maybe not his style. Although I'm sure he was sporting it at the back for a wee while as well. Um, I had uh, got it cropped in, uh, short, and f it's a ridiculous memory, but for some reason it sticks in my mind. Um, got it done, and then I, I came into the, the bowels of the club. And the first guy I met was Jimmy, Jimmy Bell, kit man, because obviously I had to choose my squad number. So uh, quite light, I was playing seven at Hearts, quite light, 17. Uh, I was told I was getting 18. So I said, right, fine, I don't know what you asked me for, but uh, I like 18, that's, that's cool with me. And then the next one I heard coming from the dressing room was uh, a certain Mr. Ferguson, Ian Ferguson. He met me at the dressing room with a big hug. And uh, I know Fergie, uh, having watched uh, Rangers over the years, that. He's a proper Rangers man, and uh, he welcomed me to the club with a handshake and a hug, and wished me all the best. And uh, it was good; it felt good because I knew that he was one of the main men here, um, steeped in the traditions of the club. And then it was all about just meeting the team the next day, which I did, and um, felt really comfortable. You know, yeah, you're right. You're walking into a dressing room uh, full of absolutely top-class players. And uh, I didn't feel overawed by it. I didn't feel nervous because I'm confident in my own ability anyway. I want to come and make a mark in my own right. And I knew I'd become a better player here, not only working with the players that were in the dressing room, but working with a, a fantastic management team and, of course, playing in front of this crowd. Your debut just so happy to be back at Tynecastle. Yeah. Can you remember the reception you got and, and just... Your, your we were mixed. Up? Really quite strange going back uh, and turning right as I walked into Tyne Castle into the away dressing room instead of carrying on and going left. So that was weird. Um, there was a wee bit of grief uh, from the stands because I can understand, you know, you, you're, you're losing a, from their perspective, they're losing a player that was important to them uh, in the year's previous success to one of their big rivals. Um, but there was a lot of really uh, good things said to me from the fans as well, and it was, but it was a kind of strange atmosphere going and then playing against guys who you shared the dressing room for two and a half years with. Suddenly you're in direct opposition. I came on a sub, I think Gary Locke tried to kick my head off within about five minutes, so that was a nice welcome. Um, but it was, it was, an, it was weirdly, it was probably a, a fitting debut that yeah, I got it, you know, out of the way early. Knocked your way into the team a couple of weeks later, Old Firm debut, a 2-2 mm -hmm. draw here at Ibrox. An, an incredible game, but your first taste of, of, of that experience, what was that like? Yeah, it was brilliant. Um, obviously you hear everything, but nothing prepares you for an Old Firm derby until you're submersed in it. I remember um, I set up Sergio out here, um, which is important for a wide player and coming to the club. It's important that I came here and made an impact um, early. And, and as a wide player, I know I scored a lot of goals for Hearts because I was encouraged to get forward, I was, I was almost like part of a, f a forward three. Um, it's important that I believed as a winger, it's your job first and foremost is to assist. So I wanted to get that out. So when I made a, a goal for Sergio, cutting in from the right against St Johnson, it maybe alleviated a little bit of pressure, it maybe was on my shoulders. Um, and then very shortly afterwards, I'm going into my first old firm game. And I made the, I remember driving in in the bus and uh, it was just carnage, you know, fans everywhere. I had never experienced that before, horses, all that sort of stuff. And uh, I'll never forget it because uh, one of the first, my dad said he was going to the game. Um, and I didn't think I would see him, but uh, he was right at the front coming in the doors, which is uh, quite emotional when you think about it because uh, cause I knew uh, that he was excited. Um, and the magnitude of the game, it was my first old firm game, and that I was starting. So um, going into the game, Bedlam obviously, and it was such a, a fantastic experience, I must admit. Um, 
when I made the goal for Gabby, um, again, just sheer elation uh, to score a, a, a great goal with that. And then I was involved in a kind of wee, kind of, uh, bit of a melee in the box as the ball broke, as Gabby came into the box for, uh, for Rod to score. But these are what you play football for, occasions like these, atmospheres uh, like these, and then um, that was brilliant. Afterwards, again, plugging away in the team, you get your first goal at Hamilton, or it was Thistle, I think the game was played at, in the, the Scottish Cup. Played a part at Thistle against Hamilton Valentine's Day, if, if, I think, if I'm right in saying 14th of February. Um, absolute swinger, right foot. Uh, I've actually scored a couple of crackers with the right foot, which, weirdly, if you look at all left footers in the game, the right foot uh, is predominantly for standing on, you know, it's not the most cultured, whereas you see right footers and they can be reasonably comfortable with their left foot. And there's exceptions to the rule, like Mr Loudrop, and certainly. Um, but generally lefties will try and get their, their, their left round anything, but the ball fell to my right foot and it wasn't a great strike at all, but it found the net. And again, that was another little bit of pressure alleviated from me because I, I did score goals. And I remember, um, I remember in, the, in the dressing room the next day, I was in, the, I was in through the, the, the bath, the shower area, I was lying in the bath, and the manager had come in and uh, he's, he's just looking at me and I'm sort of looking and he says, finally you scored a goal. Um, it was just a wee gentle nudge to me where I think, right, I need more from you. Which again, demands from a club like Rangers. That's what you expect. But it was a nice feeling. And then, you know, I went on a wee bit of a, a run. Yep, of course. Just, yeah, started uh, scoring goals. And if you wanted more, you got more. Because the following week, um, Dundee here, 6-1. Everyone will, obviously, you get two. Yeah. Alberts get three. But everyone will always remember the dink ball. And yeah, yeah. For, yeah. For Alberts for the hat-trick. I did add a wee, a wee, a wee uh, flick through from him. Um, did it against the Kilmarnock for two guys as well, down at Rugby Park. Um, that was a great game. Um, a great game. It was my first goal at Ibrox as well. The uh, ball broke to me. It was sort of set up nicely for a volley. Um, and then the second one going through. I knew as soon as I was going through what I was doing, that Big Rab would try and dive. And these things can either leave you with egg in your face or they can make you, uh, give you a feeling of of satisfaction when it comes off, it was a cheeky finish, uh, but it felt great and um, yeah, it set me off on a wee bit of a run uh, and I suddenly just felt really part of the side. The big advocate and the players allowed me to feel part of a, a great side because um, although I'm coming from uh, Hearts and um, there's guys in here, uh, Kinchelskis and Van Bronckhurst and Newmans and all these boys, I felt a big player. You know, they always felt, made me feel important. And, I, and it was really important to me that I made an impact, as I said to you. So when I cemented my place down in the, in the side early, um, yeah, I felt good. Dick Advocat, from what you said, it seemed like you had a, a really good relationship with him. Brilliant, yeah, brilliant. It's important that you have good relationships with your managers um, because I think you get the best out of your players if you've got a good relationship as a manager. It's almost very, I think most managers become almost like a father figure advisory role, a uh, very uh, disciplined man. Um, I actually love the discipline side of uh, Dick Advocat and how he went about things. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, a lot of people maybe don't like that side of it. Uh, maybe a regimental uh, discipline, but I enjoyed it. And um, tactically, I thought he was brilliant. You know, I learned so much here that I've taken into my coaching uh, ideas and how I want the game and how I think I would like to play the game from my time under Dick Advocat. You know, some of the stuff was very new to me. Um, considering we are playing with myself and maybe Andrew on the wings, very quick wide players, it, it wasn't necessarily to get the, the ball to the wide players immediately. It was about breaking lines and then getting the ball to the wide areas. Um, but the encouragement is, is to do what I'm in the team to do was, was so important and they allowed me to do that. So pushing on from there, and it all culminated in the, the game at Celtic Park, that it's one that Rangers fans will never forget. It's the, the game that you'll always be remembered by Rangers fans for. Um, going into that game, obviously everyone knew it's a title to the decider. Can you remember much about the week, the build-up to, to that match? I would probably remember from the, the Thursday onwards. The Thursday is when the penny dropped. Um, well, the penny dropped, but there was something that happened uh, that was different in my time here at Rangers, and that was when we were stepping off the bus. I used to train at Steps at the time, didn't have uh, the training centre. We were stepping off the bus, and uh, the manager pulled me and said, um, You've played through the middle. 
with Hearts. And I said, yeah, and he says, well, you're playing through the middle against Celtic. Which, when you consider that Gabby's playing and Rod's playing, I think, I said, all right, how's he going to do this? And I went, great. Yeah, it's brilliant, I'm up for that. And he says, that's fine then. And away I went and we trained and um, sort of did wee bits and pieces. So I knew I'm playing up top uh, against Celtic going into the game, so it was a slightly different feeling. Um, because generally I'm used on the wide position to create, but this time I'm almost getting put through the middle to use my pace. Um, and I remember distinctly driving in the bus and uh, sitting with the players and knowing like that something special was happening today. We just knew that we were going to win the league. There, was, there wasn't even any questions. It wasn't like, we're going to Celtic. Great side. Um, it was just like, it's only a matter of we're going to turn up, we're going to play how we play, and we're going to win the league today. And that's exactly what it was like. So there was a huge amount of confidence and belief in the group that we were going to do something very special, which has put a big mark in history of this club that would win the, the title at Celtic Park. Your first goal, the, the cut back, you get it on the, the stretch, and then your second goal running through. What do you remember about both those moments? Well, the, the, the breakaway um, with Giovanni and, uh, and then Rod, um, I knew I just had to be central and when Rod's breaking into wide areas uh, I knew I had to get myself through the middle and although I'm stretching I've sort of just checked my run a wee bit um, hoping for the, a slight cutback um, so although I'm stretching I'm, I know I'm controlling it with the outside and I said their lefties can generally <laughs> they'll try and manipulate anything they can to get their left round it so I knew that although I was stretching with the outside of the boot that I was just going to get a solid enough contact on it the feeling of elation when that hit the net it's, you know, it's, that never leaves you, the feeling. Um, and it's hard to explain. Uh, I think Claudio maybe ran in at the time, and Gabby, I'm not sure, but uh, I remember just grabbing and falling to the floor and getting up and making my way back and, uh, and seeing just absolute bedlam in the Rangers end, absolute bedlam. And it was just a confirmation that this is going to be a good day. But you're still aware of the surroundings and everything that's going on, you know, it was a carnage that day. Um, as everybody knows. The third goal, again, knew the game was done. And there was a clear, uh, there's a clear feeling and thought in my head that I'm not going down here. Because I'm thinking if I go down, like George is taking the penalty, I'm wanting this one. So as, uh, as, as Kerr's coming out, Stuart's coming out towards me, I was comfortable that I was going to just knock it around them anyway. And I just had to make sure that I wasn't taking a hit. So I made sure that I was clear of the hurdle and then rolling it at the empty net. That was the moment where you're just thinking, it's done, it's finished, we've won the league. Um, and I remember wheeling round, almost going towards the Celtic fans and seeing, seeing Carnage coming towards me and I've just wheeled round behind the goal and I can hear Hugh Dallas shouting, Neil, get back in the pitch, get back in the pitch, but my momentum had taken me around there and I was just sort of calling the boys to get down and celebrate with me in the corner. And the whole time, he was pulling my jersey to get me back onto the pitch. Because uh, I'd been booked, obviously, with Mahi. He said, I don't want to be sending you off. So I made sure I got myself back onto the pitch. But that's the moment you enjoy it. Because you know it's done. And you can soak it in. And it's just a matter of time now until the whistle goes, where you can enjoy your first title as a professional. Your first title uh, with your new club. And it just so happens it's, uh, it's a mark in history. You spoke out earlier about that, that confidence that you guys had going into that game. Did that really shine right through the game? Because barring what happened with Rod Wallace later on, you guys were so controlled, mm -hmm. kept your discipline right through the game and, and just did, did your game plan. Well, there was a supreme confidence about us um, that we were, you know, we were the best side in, that, in, in the country that year. Um, in the trophy hall, we absolutely backed that up. Going into the game, you just looked about your dressing room and you knew we just felt that we had better players. We knew we were going to Celtic Park to win the title. Yeah, it was. I can understand um, the frustrations and the emotions of the Celtic players and, and uh, it boiled over um, because they know. It's not just Rangers players and Rangers fans that know what we're standing on here about to do. They're aware of it as well and they don't want it to happen. So you can understand that their emotions are are uh, boiling over. Um, I remember Rod going in and he gets sent off and actually when you look at it back, it's never a sending off, you know, he's been booted and he's gone back in and, and then uh, Vidar reset has launched Claudio down in the corner 
and you never forget sort of cloudy his faces. He's looking up at him from the grass, and he knows he's going off as well. And at that point, they, they are just losing their control. And as I said, there's an element of understanding there because I wouldn't like it I mean, if the shoe was on the other foot. Um, but we were there to do our job, and um, it was certainly a happy place afterwards. The reaction to the game, you're the guy, you've scored the two goals, everyone's remembered your contribution. Did that change your, your life day to day? Were you all of a sudden this, well, this is a hero, this is a, this well, is a I think man. it probably changed, uh, yeah, it, it changed my life in terms of um, you've made a mark on a club's history, you know, like I did the previous year at Hearts winning a cup after so long. You play football because you love it first and foremost. It becomes a career so you earn a living off it and then you want to win, you dream of winning trophies. It's not about making money and um, the lifestyle. It's about doing what you started off with and that's winning trophies. And then you want to try and leave a legacy. You know, you want to do something special at the clubs that you're at. So to be able to do that was very, very special and I always feel it uh, will be special when I look back in my memories of football. Um, I think you're probably in the minds of Celtic fans differently, certainly. So that that in that respect, it changes from that point of view. Um, but not from a personal point of view. Um, I just felt good about myself and my place in the club, the place in the team, place in the, in the manager's thoughts, and that's that's what you're looking to do. You want to stay in the team, but it was never about. Oh, you, Listen, I've scored two goals to win as a league at Celtic Park and I've had a great introduction into Rangers and you still have to keep focusing and making sure that you're trying to improve as a player because this club at that time was signing quality all the time and try to search for greater success so you knew you couldn't take your, hat, your eye off the ball. So you push on and then another great day winning the, the treble, the Scottish Cup against yeah. Celtic game. A much tighter game, um, but again Rangers just showing their class and Rod Wallace with the winning goal that day. Yeah, um, he scored, a, a, he, he sort of looked back and as we, like the, for instance the, the shirt I wore against Celtic, because um, somebody says, oh I've got McCann's shirt, and I know he hasn't because uh, Jimmy Bell, no thank me for saying this, but he put the number eight upside down. And uh, not a lot of people know that, they'll know it now, but um, I've got that shirt and uh, so that's a wee memory in its own right um, and probably if you ask Rangers fans now with that Scottish Cup to secure the treble that year, what number did McCann play? Without looking they probably wouldn't guess, I played number six that year, which I still don't know why Dick uh, gave me that, because I think Dale played number seven uh, even, um, so I don't know why I had number six but um, again I was sort of maybe back to my more natural position. Um, Playing a wee bit wider, but being encouraged to get through the middle as well. Um, I remember the ball coming in, into the box, and I've gone in, uh, I'm coming from central position, to have a swing at it, my left foot, and it's blocked, I think it was Malby maybe, maybe blocked it from right and saying, and the ball just fell for Rod, and as he was doing all season, just buried it. Um, and again, it's just like, pfft, just unstoppable, this team. It was great looking forward to that week, because you're going into a cup final playing against Celtic and they know they're, still, they're going to be still hurting and and, uh, and we are still absolutely flying. Uh, so it was just a brilliant week getting into the cup final and then obviously it culminates in a treble.